Hi friends, I am Tirtha Banerjee, I am from Pitlight Industries and Pitlight Industries has started with a new initiative with the Dr. Fixit Institute of Structural Protection and Rehabilitation. So, this is a not for profit knowledge center, I am here today to give you a presentation on the advancements in waterproofing materials. Let us start with the presentation straight away, so that we can come to know about the various kinds of systems and where from the history of the waterproofing starts in and the chronology of waterproofing starts in. So, let us talk about the advancements in waterproofing materials. We will talk about initially a little bit on the history of the waterproofing. Waterproofing is not a subject which we are talking today. Okay, waterproofing is a subject which is talking from a far beyond time. And if you see on the history, it is basically the human civilization as it started, their basic aim was this a protection. I look for a protection, I look for a protection from the natural elements. So, that was the main thing. And then slowly by slowly as from the stone age, if you start that initially man used the caves to protect himself from the elements of the nature. Then after the cave age has gone back, then we have come to the natural materials, natural materials like thatch roofs which were started using in the, as for the rainwater protection. The history goes on history goes on, then we are coming to the more durability, we are to looking for the kind of structures which will be durable for a quite a long time. And this moves away to the from the thatch roofs to the tile roof structures. History has on going on, we come to the modern age and modern architecture. The period of the modern architecture has started around 1750 and due to some economic pressure and industrial development at that situations. And at the same time as the RCC came into play, new methods and materials of constructions were started developing. New, new methods, new, new materials, new kind of designing, new kind of construction procedures all comes into that. At the same time, when you look at the structures made from these kind of new materials, the waterproofing takes a complete different shape, waterproofing takes a complete different definition. So, new different kind of protection measures came into the pictures. The first material which we are using for the waterproofing was the natural material, it was the natural bitumen, because bitumen was abundantly used, bitumen was the abundantly there in the earth. And then in the western countries, they have started with the natural bitumen around waterproofing from the 1800 AD. And this or bitumen, if you can see about the little bit on the history of the bitumen, if you go back, Romans used to use this bitumen for the protection of the boats and the ships from the down. And the same thing has been used in the buildings, they have started to protect the buildings from the underground portions from the bitumens. And slow by slow bitumen has been modified with different kinds of fillers like sands and others, then the reinforcements like different kinds of reinforcements like jute, straw and other rack, felt and those man made materials come into the picture. In India, waterproofing does not have a backseat, India has started with a various traditional and conventional systems right from the new cement systems has come into the picture. They have started with the underground systems like box type waterproofing, which is very common in Indian subcontinent. If you go to the western part of India, you will see the various kinds of waterproofing, a very specific one I am talking about here to the, it is called the brick bat coba waterproofing, where the bricks are placed in different shapes to give the slope to the roof. Brick bat coba and then again protected with the glazed china mosaic kind of waterproofing on the top of it, it is a basically a surfacing kind of thing. If you go to the northern part of India, you will see the another kind of waterproofing which is called the lime concreting and there are some materials like insulation material that the basically the earthen pores were used for you are basically for insulation purposes. So, these kinds of waterproofing systems were used in India from the traditional time as a conventional method, but today Today the challenges with the modern RCC buildings are many more. We are coming to a situation where the speed is the ultimatum, higher speed of construction to meet the increasing demands for the mass housing, because we look for a mass housing and speed of construction has to be first. The second one in to come into the picture that is the complexity, various kinds of design, various kinds of complexity is coming into the structures. Next come to the natural part of it. When we talk to look at the environmental part, sustainability part of it, the materials like cement has a problems, it is cement production as such not is energy efficient material. It is also the carbon dioxide emission 
it leads to the global warming. Similarly, natural ingredients diminishing of the natural ingredients is the basically sustainability part of it. At the same time, we are also going through the phases like a harsh atmospheric situation, different climatic situation. So, all these challenges ultimately lead to the serviceability problem, ultimately affect the durability of the concrete structures. So, these conventional methods or what are the methods have been developed in the old back in the 1800s and the 1900s beginning has some limitations. If you look at those limitations part of it, bitumens as such as we have told about bitumens are the material it is not a very ma a good material for the thermal stresses it becomes brittle after a certain time. Similarly, coming to the brick bat coba, brick bat coba though we are using the material like a bricks as we all know bricks are very porous materials and bricks absorb a lot amount of the water and so a material which absorb water that becomes a reservoir or a pool it cannot be a kind of a waterproofing solution. Then similarly, the we are in the speed of construction time consuming kind of materials cannot be used for a today's situation of the modern construction. Another very important aspect of this conventional methods is that we are imposing, we are imposing an unnecessarily dead load on the structure. Okay. So, unnecessary dead load is not required for the waterproofing. The fifth important part of it brick bat coba systems is a rigid system and any rigid system cannot sustain for a thermal effect. So, rigid systems get lots of different kinds of cracks comes up and that cracks ultimately lead to what? That cracks ultimately lead to all these problems. Okay. It is leakage ultimately leakage takes place and then the leakage when it the water penetration takes place inside the structures the reinforcement gets corroded. As the reinforcement gets corroded there is a spalling takes place then spalling leads to the damage and ultimately we see a collapse of a structure. So, it is a phenomenal changes only with the movement of moisture inside the structure. So, just imagine the waterproofing is not a subject what we think today waterproofing is a subject it is not for the decorative item waterproofing is required for various purposes. So, why we need waterproofing if we look at this question there are the structural issues as I have already told about that ingress of moisture leads to all these problems and ultimately to the damage of the structure durability of the structures. Coming to the next is the aesthetic part, part of it definitely with the moisture movements as the moisture moves into the structures it also happens to the appearance of the exterior surface becomes poor your woodwork gets bulged your paints get come, uh, comes out and also there is the brickworks and the plasters they get failed because of the fluorescence and the other issues. Third very important issue is the health definitely in a moist environment if we sit for a longer time will not feel good. So, in health hazards is another issue on the need of the waterproofing and where we need it if we look at a building structures it is not only only the above grade structures it is also in the sub grade structures in every sections of the building requires the waterproofing right from the roof podiums to the wet areas elevations even if for the basements and foundations underground tanks swimming pools industrial cellars and the sunken floors. Now, let us talk about some basics of waterproofing when you talk about the waterproofing no need to know about the waterproofing I give you some basics we use three terms in waterproof normally when the moisture gets movement into the structures what are the three terms normally one is the leakage one is the seepage and one is the dampness these three terms are different you know how these three terms are different basically they belong to the quantum of the flow quantum flow of water magnitude of the water inputs when it is leakage leakage means a continuous flow of water takes place a seepage means there is a formation of the water globules on the surface with occasional droplets dampness is a basically a visible moisture. So, this depends on the three different kinds of the water movement takes place and on the basis of the three the type of the products or type of the treatment gets varied. Okay. So, we define there are two terms into the waterproofing when the moisture movement we treat it first one is the called the waterproofing. Waterproofing is defined as a treatment of a surface or structure to prevent the passage of water under hydrostatic pressure when there is a pressure involved into the movement with the movement of the water 
So, that is called the waterproofing. Similarly, in case of a dam proofing, there is no pressure. Water dam proofing is a treatment of a surface or a structure to resist the passage of water and in the absence of any hydrostatic pressure. So, this is the fundamental difference between a waterproofing treatment and a dam proofing treatment. Now, let us see the materials. Waterproofing materials, when you talk about waterproofing materials, must offer what? It has to, when you are applying on a substrate, it has to be compatible with the old substrate, first things. Second one, it should have an excellent bonding properties, low shrinkage, good strength, should have a dimensional stability, crack resistance, impermeability. One of the most important is that material should not be only good, it should have a ease of application also. And ultimately, the material has to be durable. Okay. So, waterproofing materials when you categorize it, there are two kinds of waterproofing and the all kinds of waterproofing coming under two categories. The first one is called the integral waterproofing and the second one is called the external waterproofing. A integral waterproofing means it is a second line protection to your structures and the external waterproofing gives you the first line protection to the structures from the rain waters or the water which is coming from the outside. Now, we will elaborate on these two, what are the integral waterproofing kind of materials and what is the external waterproofing kinds of material. Let us first start with the integral waterproofing materials. Integral waterproofing is generally done by using some kind of liquid and powder mixed with the concrete to make the structure as such watertight okay. and it is mixed during the making of the concrete or the mortar. And what are the systems include into the integral waterproofing material? The first system called the integral waterproofing compounds, it can come in the liquid or as well as in the powder. Second one is the corrosion inhibitors and the third one is the impregnations. What is an integral waterproofing compounds? Integral waterproofing compounds are some powder materials or liquid materials which are added to the concrete or a mortar during the mixing of it with the cement. Now, in integral waterproofing material, the powder and liquid, how they work? The mechanism of that, the first material, the powder material, the powder is basically in a kind of inert materials. And in concrete, if you look at a structure of the concrete, concrete during its making, it uh, there are lots of capillary pores which are created. And those capillary pores, if they are interconnected, then water can easily move through the structure and penetrate inside your structures. So, integral waterproofing material when it is a powder material, they are basically used as the pore blockers. Okay. They sit inside those capillary trucks, tracks and block those capillaries, so water cannot move through it. The second line of the integral waterproofing material which is a liquid material, they basically form a kind of a film inside and those films cut the capillaries at regular intervals. So, that is the truncation of the capillary. So, in both the cases what you are doing that capillary pores which is allowing the moisture to move to the structures are blocked or truncated. So, that is the way a structure becomes integrally watertight. Okay. So, that is the integral waterproofing. Second is coming to the next waterproofing when the RCC structures we are talking about it is not only concrete we have to protect your reinforcement steels also. So, reinforcement is a material which always subject to the corrosional effect. So, we have to use a material which will inhibit the corrosion process. So, this kind of material when you are using with the concrete, they are acting on the reinforcement. There are three kinds of uh, corrosion inhibitors are there, one is called the anodic inhibitors, one is the cathodic inhibitors and one on the mixed inhibitors. The anodic inhibitors work on the anodic side of the electrochemical process of the corrosion, cathodic inhibitors work on the cathode side of the electro electrochemical process and the mix works in the both ways. They basically protect the reinforcement, make a kind of a passive film over the surface of the reinforcements and that gets protected through that process. Okay. This is the way the corrosion inhibitor works. The third material which is coming is that called the impregnations. What is an impregnation? An impregnation is a material which we, we are, when you are pouring on the surface or you are pushing through the material, it goes inside and fill the pores. So, there are three different kinds of the impregnation which are used depending on the what is the availability of the moisture in close of the structures, depending on the what kind of the structure you are going to use it. So, 
first kind of the impregnation which works as an hydrophobic lining. These materials when you are uh, mixing with the concrete, they are going inside and whichever there is a pores in the structures, they are basically a lining is formed at the pore structures and that lining is protecting from the movement of the water. The second uh, category of the material is basically the partial filling, where the pores are get partially filled up, it is not only a lining, it is get partially filled up with this kind of materials. But when you are coming to a structure which is a continuous under the water penetrations or it is a kind of a retaining structures or it is a kind of a basement structures, you require those pores to be completely filled. So, those materials are used for those purposes to fill the complete pore of the structures. So, these are the three ways by which we can make an egg structure integrally watertight. Understood? So, that is the first of all is the integral protection. Now, the second category we will go into that that is called the external protection when the structures has already been built up. Under this category what are we doing about the external waterproofing? We are protecting the structure from the water which is coming from the outside or a physical barrier. We are creating a physical barrier either in the form of a coating or in the form of a membrane or there is a material which you are giving a surfacing on the surface. So, external waterproofing there are five types of external waterproofing. The first one is called the weather protective coatings, the second one is called the barrier membranes. In barrier membranes there are two types one is called the prefabricated membranes, one is called the liquid applied membranes. Third category is called the joint sealing compounds for expansion and the construction joints. The fourth material is the surfacing material and the fifth one is the injection grouts. Now, we will elaborate each of this material and the applications part of it. Let us first is look at the weather protective coatings. There are the various kinds of weather protective coatings which are used for the concrete or the machinery surfaces. The first one which is coming is the called the primer or a bond sealer. So, this kind of primers are used for to protect your actual substrate from the blocking the sealing the basically the pores of the actual substrate okay. and also the primer makes a bonding with the actual coating with the substrate. There is a fun thing, so primer is a very important material before you apply the actual waterproofing coating. Second category is coming is called the water repellent. This material does not allow the movement of the water through it. So, when the water comes on it, water becomes a kind of a droplet. So, where you have to use this kind of material water repellent? Water repellent kind of material we have to use in a kind of a facades. If you are doing on architectural facades, brick facades are kind of things we have to use, we have to protect the structures as well as we have to keep the interior structure design also the similar. So, architectural finishes has to look good. So, there we have to use the water repellent for the external walls. Third category is coming the for the external coating. In external part of the surface basically the wall surfaces what kind of the coatings we should select, what are the properties we should look from that coating. It is a very important part of it because when you look at the external part of it the first important thing comes up the material itself should not deteriorate. So, the material should be a material which is not deteriorated by the sunlight or the UV. Second part of it that material should not crack itself, that material should take the movements of the thermal stresses. So, it should be the elastomeric materials fine. So, acrylic is the material which is used for that purposes. So, acrylic material and elastopenic materials are used for the external purposes. Here I just want to mention two important times one is called the flexible material, one is called the elastomeric material. These two terms are completely different, two different aspects of that. A flexible material takes the movements of the flexural movement and elastomeric material takes the elastic movement of the surface. So, for the external surfaces we should always go for an elastomeric materials. The fourth one is the anti carbonation coating for the concrete surfaces as, we, uh, as well as the cement machinery surfaces we have to protect those structures from the carbonation effect. Carbonation means the attack of the carbon dioxide on the surface of the concrete. So, different aliphatic acrylics are used for those purposes for a anti carbonation coating. Fifth one is the damp walls, dampness is one of the most important aspect. What we have to do for the dampness? Dampness is what? what is, as I told you earlier dampness is basically is a kind of a moisture which is uh, present over there and it 
wants to come out. Okay. So, we have to use a material which will allow that moisture to go out. So, which will allow that moisture to move through it. We cannot use any kind of material which will make a barrier at that spot. A normal paint will make a kind of a barrier that will not allow that moisture to go out. Okay. So, we have to use a material which has to use allow that moisture to go out as a vapor. So, that is why the water based epoxy materials are used for the damp proofing okay. and why the water based epoxies are used for those purposes. Water based epoxies are used basically you can apply directly on the damp surface. Second thing is that why the epoxies have been used if you are going to use on the treatment plants. So, you can use a kind of a chemical resistant kind of coating for this. Fifth one is the polyurethane coating single component polyurethane coating these have been developed through the, as a roof coating. Then polymer modified cementitious coating the last category this is a flexible under coming under the flexible category. These kind of materials are used for the sunken portions okay, like our wash, uh, wash, uh, wash areas, bathroom, toilets those areas we have to use this kind of materials. Now, let us talk about waterproofing weather protective coating how the history chronology comes up. In around 1945 to 1955 bitumen emulsion has come into place with different kinds of bitumen emulsion of the SBR and the acrylic emulsion for the waterproofing. In 1970 came the cement based coatings using acrylics, acrylic emulsions, styrene butadiene, unsaturated polyesters they come into the picture. In 1982 came the polyurethane two component coating for the long term solution for the leakages. Years passed by in 1983 came the unsaturated polyester based roof coating materials. 1985 came the solvent based block copolymers coating based on the styrene ethylene butadiene materials. Then we have seen in that two component materials are very difficult to use on the site. So, there came the material like a single component moisture trigger polyurethane roof coatings launch looking at the durability and removing the all kinds of problems happening on the site level. So, these are about the weather protective coatings. We will move to the next category that is called the barrier membranes. The barrier membranes these are the material which is next step above the your coatings where you have to use a barrier membranes. There are two categories of barrier membranes again here one barrier membranes is comes as a preformed membrane. Second category comes as a liquid when you apply it it forms a membrane. We categorize a membrane where the minimum thickness of the material should be 1 mm. A coating was basically a micron level right. So, in the prefabricated systems there are mostly five types there are some more materials which are also coming. The first one is called the reinforced modified bitumen, bitumen is modified with two different kind of polymers one is called the atactic polypropylene that is APP another is called the styrene butadiene styrene ok SBS modified. So, bitumen is modified to increase its melting point because bitumen is a material which was melting due to the thermal stresses. Okay. Now, why that these two compounds different two compounds are used where APP modified bitumen has to be used APP modified bitumen has to be used in the tropical atmosphere where the temperature of the climatic temperature is more than 5 degree and where the climatic temperature is below 5 degree you have to use a material called the SBS modified bitumen ok. EPDM rubber EPDM stands for ethylene propylene diene monomer. Okay, it is a synthetic rubber systems which has comes into that used as a very highly chemical resistant materials and the longevity wise EPDM rubber materials is a very highly elastomeric material or a longevity if you see it more it lasted more than 20 to 30 years. Then there are various other materials also thermoplastic poly -olif olefins are available like TPOs then polyvinyl chloride uh, membranes are available. HDP membranes are available these are coming under all the prefabricated membrane system. In the liquid applied membrane systems you have different categories I have mentioned here the just 5 there are so many varieties are available. First one is called the polymer modified cementitious systems their fiber incorporated water based acrylics ok which kind of material I will show you the application part of that polymer modified bitumen emulsions polyurethane systems and also the polyurea kind of systems which has come into the pictures. So, let us see the where the applications of the barrier membranes before that we will talk about a little bit on the application part. These barrier membranes can be applied by a self addition kind of material you can see here that 
it is on a retaining wall is just an a self adhesive and it can it is pasted over here it can be applied as a torch on application it can be heated up and geared to the surface it can be a liquid sprayed liquid is sprayed through the materials this is a spray application which is going on and this is during the casting itself the membrane has been placed into the position okay so diff different applications of the membranes takes place again a historical chronology for your uh, interest in 1960 the epdm membranes launched into the market okay then 1968 your pvc comes into pvc geo membranes comes into pictures the launch as an alternative to the horse play applied based form membrane tpo thermoplastic polyolefin membrane first introduced in the europe and then that was talking and that and they were telling it like a flexible polyolefins kind of material then when it is going to the us and they call it thermoplastic polyolefin that the actual material is the thermoplastic polyolefins in the early 90s has come into now where are the applications the poly prefabricated membrane systems are applied in various areas first area is called the roofs and the exposed areas when you have the rainfall is more than average level you should use a kind of a membrane systems on the top of the roof fine so we have over seen here there are single layer of the single layer membrane systems okay this is applied this is the base slab over that this is your uh, a geotextile membrane then your primer comes up and then your membrane comes up this is a kind of a sand membranes over here this is a single layer membrane and over the membrane if you see it has gone from the base slab and to the parapet wall and here what you are seeing this is called the flashing the aluminum flashing is used as a drip mold and on the top of the aluminum flashing this gap is filled up with a kind of a sealant either a polysulfide sealants or a polyurethane kind of sealants so that is the specification similarly the single layer if it is you require a more durable or the rainfall is too high you can go with a double layer protection of the similar materials similarly this is the roof application it has also can be used for the roof gardens okay in case of the roof gardens you can use you can either use without insulation also the so similarly it is a membrane then the over that over the membrane you are coming with a protection screed of concrete and then your all root barriers and other materials are coming and vegetation medium and when you are having a with insulation you can see here this yellow color so this is the insulation systems which were provided in between so this is for the roof gardens similarly we go to the basements the basements again in the basement there are two categories shallow basements and the deep basement normally with a shallow basement we go to a liquid applied membranes in deep basement we go into the prefabricated membrane systems i first sh show you here is the deep basement where the deep basements has been applied is over here this is on the base slab and then the rafts are being created and this is the external side of the basement okay similarly this is again what the waterproofing of the shallow basement with a self adhesive bitumen membrane system this is a base slab the which is the over that is your membrane is coming then your raft is coming up the very important part of it here is that these two membrane system has to be unified that is called the your how these two system overlapping each other whole waterproofing concept i just want to mention your whole waterproofing concept depends on the concept called building envelope how you can make a kind of an envelope okay so overlapping at each areas so that is very very critical during the application it can be used even if for the epdm membranes are used for the pond lining for the artificial pond lining systems which you can see over here for the artificial ponds you have just excavated you have put a geotextile over the surface and put the epdm membrane on the top of it okay similarly epdms are also used for the industrial roofing even if for the metal roofing this is all about the pfms poly prefabricated membrane system for the liquid applied membrane systems it used for the roofing okay it is without insulation this is with insulation you can see here this is a kind of material again which a primer then three coats of the application is a fiber incorporated acrylic systems i am showing over here this material this i have shown on the flat roofs and this is shown on the slope roofs even if on the slope roofs you can apply on that with the tiles bitumen emulsions is can also be applied bitumen emulsion for the shallow basements you can apply also the bitumen apply, emulsions can be applied for the flat roofs 
basically for the industrial areas. So, those areas to be done with the uh, liquid applied membrane systems. Now, these are the barrier membranes. Next category is called the for the materials for the construction joints. Construction joints are unavoidable in any construction because you have to go in the lift by lift. So, in the construction joints are created specifically the problem created in the retaining wall portions or the retaining line of surfaces in the water bodies. So, there we have to protect the construction joints. What we normally use conventionally normally use the PVC water stops. You can see this blue color, this is called the PVC water stops okay, with the ridges. And when the first lift of the concrete is placed and the PVC water stops is placed and the second layer of the concrete comes on that. But PVC water stops has a problem, there is a limitation that PVC never bonds to the concrete and that allows the water again to pass through the in between layer of the PVC and the concrete. Right? That has been now there is a new system which has come out that is called the expanding hydrophilic water stops. Okay. There is a butyl rubber based systems. This material comes as a 20 mm by 20 mm strips. You can see in the inside pictures this is the 20 mm by 20 mm strips. It can be applied on the surface vertically even if horizontally and then you place the concrete. As the concrete shrinks in the process setting it expands and it fills that portion. That is the way a hydrophilic water stops work. In expansion joints you have various materials polysulfide sealants which are used for the different even for the runways, buildings, expansion joint treatments, even if for the swimming pools it has been used for the polysulfide sealants. Polyurethane sealants are also used for the expansion joints. When there is a various kinds of internal and external filling joints like your bathtub joints and other fitting joints, you use the sealant called acrylic sealants and silicone sealants are mainly used for the metallic and non-metallic frame joints. Okay. Now, sealants when you have to select a sealant, sealant is property depends on a one fundamental part of it, how it behaves with the expansion. Okay. So, that expansion parameter makes a very important parameter depending on the how much is the expansion can take, uh, take material. So, it can it has to be applied over there. Okay. That is called the movement accommodation factor of the material itself. Surfacing fifth uh, fourth category was the surfacing various polymer composites are used for the surfacing materials. I show here the two different composite system one is called the polymer modified concrete systems or a polymer modified mortar systems. The polymers used in this category are the acrylics, styrene butadiene rubbers these are the category of the material which are used to modify the properties of the cement matrix. In case of the polymer concrete there is no cement use you are using the polymer itself with a filler. Okay. Where you have to use a polymer concrete, where you want a very high strength repair is required or you require a very fast repair is required. So, that kind of areas we are using the polymer concrete. The main objective of the this is that to overcome the intrinsic problems like the ductility, high, uh, high brittleness and the strong cracking propensity of the normal RCC. So, these are the surfacing material which are used for the waterproofing. Now, I will show you about the injection grouse. In injection grouse, three different problems is the one is the rising water dampness when the water comes from the down depending on the move, uh, your hydrostatic pressure varies even when the water table varies your water comes up from the brick machinery walls and that has to be stopped at the plinth level. So, this kind of injection grouts has to be used at the plinth level you have to inject it there in two levels and that will flow inside and that will fill the pores and so that the water cannot pump from the inside. In crystalline materials this is used for the internal pore fillers like a situation like bathrooms where the from the top floor the water is flow, uh, pouring okay, or this is called kind of a seepage happening then you have to block those areas. So, first you have to try to do the crystalline material, crystalline material when you are putting inside what happens as it goes inside the surface it crystallizes inside and it blocks the pores. Another category is called the polyurethane foam injections, polyurethane foam injections when you are applying on the polyurethane foam injection as the material goes inside polyurethane goes inside and comes in contact with the water it foams. There is a 40 time expansion takes place and it blocks the areas. 
Now, these two cases I am telling you this crystalline material if you are doing about these areas like a overhead dampness or created or overhead percolation of water this is called a negative treatment. Okay. So, negative treatment kind of treatment can be done through this materials. Injection also used for the pore feelers with various resin based injection systems are used for that low viscous epoxy injections, polyurethane injection even if for the areas where it is a underwater situation you have to use a moisture insensitive epoxy injections for the underwater applications. Cementitious injections ultra fine ready to use cement injection systems are available which can be applied in the concrete structure to fill the pores in between the cements. Okay. So, these are coming under the when you have a poorly compacted concrete or the water is coming from the structure. I will show you here two uh, areas of the buildings with the materials I will show you one very important area of a building is the weight areas. Because in the weight areas like bathroom, toilets, kitchens other areas we use a lots of water. Other areas water is coming from outside here we are using water on our own okay, deliberately putting the water. So, this requires a very extensive way of the waterproofing. What are the areas in a bathroom are very critical first critical area is the piping first critical area is the piping, the pipe joints and the nani trap joints. So, this has to be first filled up. So, I have shown you you have to fill the nani trap joints areas with a kind of a free flow grout, non shrink grout systems. So, that there is no leakage or seepage happens from that place. In the pipe joints portion when the concealed pipes goes up joint you have to use a kind of a double sided tape over there. So, that that joints does not leak. Okay, if there is it, that is a protection taken place. In waterproofing for the base slab as well as on the vertical portion, okay, there are various options available. It can be polymer modified cementitious coating, it can be rubber based, polyurethane, bituminous, various things, kinds of systems are used. In tiling and the sanitary tiling should not be done with a normal cement. Why should not use a normal cement? The cement is a material which shrinks. Okay. So, you have to use a non shrink kind of material, water tight material that is why ready to use cementitious tile adhesive should be used and tile grout should be used to fill up the joints in between two tiles. I am showing you a small diagram of the bathroom or bathroom where a sketch has been given for where which material should be used. If you can see here each and every material where to be used, how to be used it has been given into this picture very clearly demonstration it is the tile adhesive segment this is the one is a vertical area how to use the waterproofing coating this is the base areas where to use the waterproofing coating this is the pipe joints areas where the tape has to be applied this is the area where to be grouted these are the areas fittings areas the sealant has to be filled up. So, each and every section of a bathroom has been taken care of it is a complete bathroom package it is called. The last one is that water tanks water tanks again is a retaining structures and water tanks requires an extra protection because it is a portable water which you are putting in. Okay. So, material should be non toxic internal coating external to we have talked about whether protective coatings internal material should be non toxic material it should be is clearly visible material. So, that the maintenance can be taken place even if it should be a material which can take care of the because the water which is coming in inside the water tank that is a chlorinated water. So, that chlorine effects has to be taken care by the coatings. Okay. So, this is the way a waterproofing takes place in a bathroom and all the joints and the areas has to be grouted and this shown over here. Now, this is all about the materials of the different waterproofing systems, but what materials will not solve the purpose until and unless you go with the proper specifications until and unless we go with the proper applications. Because most of the case if you go on a globally and statistics has been taken around 99 percent of the waterproofing failures which is happened because of these problems. One is the human installation, second is the wrong system specified in the place for the service period, third is the preparatory work was not proper, the fourth one was the incompatibility of the materials. Okay. Now, so, when we have to look at it care should be taken in the different areas, I have just mentioned four very critical areas here first one is the slope any no waterproofing material can work either otherwise your substrate slope is perfect. So, slope of the substrate should be adequate. So, that it allows that 
movement of the water to take place. Second one is the substrate should be sound without any void or crack. So, you have to check the soundness of the surface. Substrate moisture should be within the specification limit and no loose particle or impurity should be present which can debond the material. Okay. This is about all about the waterproofing, but waterproofing does not complete, there is no compromise with the quality construction. So, I just want to mention over here, this is a statutory reminder, waterproofing materials are only a protective elements, but you have to cannot compromise the concrete quality, you cannot compromise with the structures. So, that is why everything when you are doing a waterproofing each and every sense from the right from the making of the concrete to the curing of the concrete has to be taken care of properly then only a life cycle or a sustainable structures can go on. So, that is all about the waterproofing thank you very much. Yeah. So, to summarize with waterproofing material there are plethora of materials are available in the market as we have seen. There are materials like membrane systems, coating systems, but ultimately the materials are there, but you have to do a good quality concrete, you have to do a good structure uh, making and that only give you a kind of a quality waterproofing and that only will give you a durable structures. Thank you.